How did it come to this? I have had enough of this world. I need a new crew and a ship. Then I can leave this awful place. But first, there's something else I need to do. Hello and welcome. In this episode I'm going to set up a new campaign of 5 Parsecs from Home, a solo tabletop game designed by Ivan Sorensen and currently available from Modifius. Um, I'm playing with rules from the 3rd edition, uh, which is currently the newest one. A small disclaimer though, I'm new at the rules and this game, so there might be errors that I'm doing during the play, um, but as long as they're not game breaking, I'm rolling with them. Speaking of rolling, let's go ahead and set up the campaign. This is the plan I'm going to use to set up the campaign. There will be quite some rolling during the setup, so stick around. First off is to decide the difficulty on the size of the crew. Uh, the crew size determines how many models you take on each battle, but you can have as many members in the crew as you want. I choose an easy difficulty and an appropriate victory condition for this campaign. Um, play 20 campaign turns and I choose the smallest crew size, which is 4. Next up is to roll for story points. You roll a d6 and add 1. The story points can be exchanged for credits and experience and many more stuff during the campaign. I got an average roll here and this brings me to four story points to start with. Then is our starting starship. I've created some tables to generate a name for it, so let's roll for a name. The roll has determined the name to be Hand and Sun. The next role is to get the actual type of the starship that we start with. 42 is a repurposed science vessel with 20 hull points. Unfortunately for our crew, they didn't have exactly the money for it, so they had to loan some and now they're in debt. In this instance, this is determined by rolling a d6 and adding 10 to it. Quite a high roll, so that leaves us with a debt of 15 credits to pay off. Well, we have to see about that. And now we finally roll for the characters in our crew. I have a table that generates a given name, a family name and a call sign for each of the characters, uh, courtesy of Iron Sworn Starforged. The first character will be a human named K Dancer Mihara, which is also my leader. So I roll for background, motivation and class. For background he got research outpost, which gives him plus one savvy and plus one gadget um, at the start. Um, for motivation I note down technology, which Apparently it shouldn't be that. Um, I rolled something different, but uh, due to some error, um, I wrote down technology. Um, but this fits as well. This gives me another savvy and another gadget. Um, and his class will be agitator, which means that he starts with a rival. Um, so that's uh, that. Um, this brings him to the following stat line in the end. Next up, I decided to use a bot, which is a new feature in the third edition of Five Parsecs from Home. It has a quite different stat line, which has improved stats than a normal human, but has the disadvantage that it cannot gain experience and doesn't roll on the background motivation and class tables. Uh, but it also has a six plus saving throw. Uh, it's called Touchdown. 
And the next two characters will be human as well. First up is Creed Harrow Mackinson. He grew up with his background in a war-torn hellhole, which gives him plus one reactions and uh, a military weapon to start with. Then his motivation will be escape, which makes sense. He grew up in a hellhole, um, so he is quite quick on his feet, so he gets gains plus one speed. And his class is a ganger, that's how he got around, uh, which gives him another reaction and uh, a low-tech weapon to start with. So this brings him to up to three reactions, which is quite good. Um, but let's see the next one. And last but not least, we have May Mole Barlow. She has the background of giant, overcrowded, dystopian city, which gives her as well plus one speed. She's uh, as fast as uh, Harrow. Uh, her motivation is political, so she is more the politically intriguing um, character, uh, which gives her a patron and another story point. And she as well has a class as Ganger. So it might be that maybe um, she and Harrow met each other at the same gang and are now fleeing from somebody or from something. Who knows? And now rolling for starting equipment. There are some default starting equipment that you get, and you get additional equipment from motivation classes and backgrounds uh, during the crew setup. Uh, for every cross here on this list, I will get to roll on the appropriate table and add that to my equipment or stash. The stash is shared by all characters. It's not that a character has specific equipment. You can share and equip everything that you have in your stash to every character uh, at the beginning of every battle. I didn't record the dice rolls this time around because there are quite a lot of them and I just wanted to speed up everything, so I'm just presenting the end results. First up we have the weapons. Um, nothing special there, um, quite a range of different weapons. At least I got a ranged weapon for every character, so at least I can equip every character with a ranged weapon. Um, and I have also as well two close combat weapon in the blade and the boarding saber, um, which makes it everything good. There's also two plus one damage um, weapons in there, which is also very good because this allows me to uh, damage or kill um, enemy characters more efficient or more likely. So that's at least good. And then we got some gear, um, quite some interesting equipment or gear that I get here, some gadgets and, and tools that I get here. Um, the communicator is really, really good. Uh, it gives me plus one die in the reaction roll. I have to discard one, but this basically means that I increase my chances to act before the enemy turn, which is really good, especially because I have two characters that have an increased reaction um, value so that helps me also of course hopefully to act before the enemy as well um, there is the snooper bot which also helps a bit because I can ignore penalties on the seized initiative role which is good um, with, but it, the bot might break and the purifier which is also nice because this is a credit that I can I can get um, during the campaign um, because I can produce water and sell that off, which is also good because it's a part of some sort of income that I get. And finally, we roll the world, the first world where we start the campaign on. I use the same tables that I use for rolling up the ship name as well to roll up the world name and the name that I rolled up is Kiki's Sanctuary and next up we also roll for the world settings 
The first roll will be a d6, which determines if we need a license to do patron jobs. Uh, in this case, we do not. We need to roll a five or a six to have to need a license. And the last thing here as well is to roll for the world trait. Every world has a trait that determines a bit um, what the world does or has. And in this case, it's um, fuel shortage. So everything um, is difficult to get um, fuel, which costs us extra credits if we want to leave this world, which is extra bad because we don't have that much credit to begin with. We also start with one patron um, from Mole that started with a patron because of her uh, motivation. Patrons are just a way to say or to determine that there is people on there that will give us jobs that are more lucrative. They give us extra pay. So there's like good connections, etc. that we have on this world uh, that might give us better pay. And we also have a rival, um, courtesy of, of a Harrow. Uh, no, I think it was from, from our leader actually, from, um, from Dancer that has a rival. And we also roll up, uh, what the type of enemy is. And in this case, it's raiders. So this concludes the setup of our world. So there I am, drowning in debt, a half-broken bot by my side, and two shady gangers. What joins this rag band of misfits together is the urge to escape this wretched world. But I can't shake the feeling that we are being watched. 